we have the vision to solve tomorrow's energy problems by converting high altitude wind energy into electricity. And I will show you uh, during my next uh, speech, you know, what, what that future could look like. But before starting about the future, I think it's um, very important, as Adam said, to, to understand a little bit who I am, where I'm coming from, and where I'm going to. Somebody once told me, be as a tree. Look for the leaves in the sky, but remember your roots. Um, my mother, a lovely person, um, but she had uh, a phobia against birds. You see that on the right-hand side of the pictures. And by a sudden scream when I was seven years old, um, she gave that over to me. I, I hate birds. Um, on the other side, my father, um, he taught me about the mechanics of the wings. He told me the, the birds, they don't fly just by doing that. I was seven years old, so. But they do a pitching, a pitching movement, and they also need their tail to, 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 to be stabilized. And, and somewhere that was in my head, it, it, and it's still there. Um, and the crucial moment when I was with my father and my mother, I'm not sure if many of you were born then, but in the early 70s, I was in Le Bourget, when one of the beauty, most beautiful planes, the Tupolev 144, took off and crashed. There was an amazing scream around the skies. I remember that as it was yesterday. And uh, it, it was kind of wow, and, and wow in, in two different senses. Wow, how beautiful. Wow, how sad. And, and this, this uh, brought me to actually build my career. I studied aerospace engineering in Delft. I worked uh, one year in the space industry uh, for SNECMA. Uh, 10 years in Switzerland for Ruag. Then I went on for consulting, trying to tell people what they should do, but basically they know best what people, you know, what they do. Uh, and then the aha moment came last December when I had a Glühwein in the Zurich Christmas market and somebody was talking about airborne wind energy. I said, you know, I have TwinTech, I am flying at 200, 300 meters high, and I can really capture more energy out of the wind. I said, yes, of course, because the higher you go, the more wind speed there is. If you double the wind speed, you get eight times more power. And please tell me if I'm getting too technical here. Then I start thinking, probably <laughs> through the alcohol as well, and this is how I came to this uh, new concept. You see here, I'm going to tell you a story about Earth, wind, and fire. Let's start with the Earth. Uh, you probably heard that a lot of times today. Um, we really have an enormous problem. Uh, world population is emitting 36 gigatons uh, CO2. That's a million times a million kilos CO2. Um, more than one billion people are still off grid. So when they want to get electricity, they will probably go for a diesel generator. So the problem that you see in the first line is probably going to get worse. Um, and I put the last point just to open up our minds a little bit. When we talk about energy, let us not forget other markets as well, which is about communication and connectivity. That was the earth, now is the wind. There is a study from Archer in 2009 saying that if you would be able to harvest the energy in the jet stream, you would be able to feed the world a hundred times, meaning 99% you could export to Mars if there were some people out there. So adding more wind turbines, yes, there is a study. If you could have 4 million wind turbines, you could be sustainable. But who wants to have a wind turbine blowing in the air in the back, in the back of, your, in the, of your garden? Nobody, everybody wants the phone, but nobody wants the mast uh, in, in, on his roof. So it's time to realize that if you add horses to your coaches, you don't get fast. That's not from me, that's from Ford. And um, I'm going to show you how we are going to bring the fire to connect the winds to the earth by the following video. Can you please launch the, the, the first video? It's an animation about how the technology works.
You remember the Dolph story, the pitching of the wings. If you, and now, no, you don't hear me then. If you have a wing with a positive angle of attack, and I'm getting aerospace here, you create a lift. If you have a negative angle of attack, you create a little down lift. But if you have the total vector in front of the rotation, you create a lift and you create a rotational moment. And this is what you're going to see here. We have a system which is um, mobile. We have talked to customers, uh, military customers. They say this is extremely interesting. We are now in, on diesel, but uh, we want to be able to have something else in our portfolio. So this is a deployable version. You see here um, three elements. You see a pair of wings. You see a ring. The blue thing is a generator slash a motor. So if there is no wind, for example, for takeoff, the motor is activating the ring, and the wings themselves are individually controlled by pitch. With other words, by pitch control, and this is a, a technology that is, exists, these so-called cyclorotors work like this. The, um, the pitch variation along that circle creates on one side the lift, and on the other side creates the rotational moment, which is converted to electricity through that generator, the blue thing, the generator. That generator then transmits the electricity to the, to the Earth. Now, yes, there are other systems out there. There are kites, there are drones, but they all work with crosswind. They maneuver. They make either eight shapes or they make circular shapes. Now, they are limited in height. They cannot go beyond 300, maximum 400 meters very, easy, very simply because of the cable weight. The cable that needs to transmit that energy is so heavy that there is a limitation to height. Now, my system here is working on a geostationary way. It is one singular point in space that this thing works. Um, it is fully controllable, fully maneuverable, because each and every wing can adapt its pitch or its angle of attack depending on need. So if it's flying here and wants to roll to the left like an aeroplane does, you see the, the flaperons and the the very same system. It is stable in all dimensions. Center of gravity is low, and it's fully controllable. Now, coming back to the singular point in space, this is the way I can reach up to jet stream altitude. I have a first system operating at two, 300 meters, not higher because of cable weight. Um, but that configuration of the pitch is really focused on creating the uplift. The next stage, seeing more wind, can dedicate a little bit of energy to the lift and more energy to the rotational moment. And this is how I can build a ladder of systems that is going up to jet stream altitude. I know it's, uh, this is, uh, sounds like science fiction. Um, actually, I have another video that I will show you later. Uh, basically, the, the guy from... Uh, uh, from the BBC asked me, you know, <laughs> this is really looking like science fiction, but I said, yes, it's, it looks like science fiction, but it works. Um, of course, there will be questions around air traffic and so forth and so forth, but all these problems are solvable. Um, Bill Gates, two years back, he dedicated, together with some other rich people, a fund of ha that has one billion US dollars, because he says and he sees that after the internet, the harvesting of the jet stream energy will be the real next thing. And I'm convinced that we have the technology for, for doing so. Um, this is a kind of a summary of what I just said. Um, there are other systems out there, yes. But we are the only system that, because it's operating in a geostatic way, is able to build a ladder of systems and going up there where the wind is really blowing. Um, jet stream 
winds are, um, they start at uh, 30 meters per second. Usual wind turbines operate at 15 meters per second. And they can go up to 400, 500 kilometers an hour. This is 120 to 140 meters per second. I remember what I said before. If you double wind speed, you get eight times more power. If you tenfold wind speed, you get 1,000 times more power. Remember that, 1,000 times more power. This is science. This is not invented here. This is, not, this is engineering. This is technology. Let's make an excursion to India to see. I mean, the technology is nice, but at the end of the day, it needs to work. Let's look at the Earth in India. Um, India, uh, Uttar Pradesh state, which is the, the state in red, about 200 million people. 80% like world average is, is based on, on, on fuel-based uh, energy production. And uh, unfortunately, in 2013, 43 million people had no energy. So there is a need. Not only people have no energy, but if they would have energy, the chances are high that they would satisfy that energy by fuel. Next is the wind. India has the resources in the backyard, not in the backyard, in the upyard. The tropical jet stream is flowing just across southern India. The stream, you know, the wind speeds that we talked about before. And if you look at the Uttar Pradesh state that I said before, Himalayan and monsoon winds are flowing just there. So they, you know, the need is here on Earth, the opportunity is up there, so let us connect the earth to the wind. You remember the last um, bullet point on, on the first slide is about not only energy, but let's look at connectivity. Let's look at communication. I think that energy and communication, this is how we transform from apes to humans, basically. Um, there is a, another market. It's not the energy market. It's the communication market. There are people like Google and others who look at high altitude pseudo satellites. So if we would take that same geostationary platform, not only to convert wind into electrical energy, but also kind of helping, so helping off-grid people get connected, but also help people to communicate. So you have one system here, Another system one kilometer further on, you can use those geostatic platforms floating in the air to have those people communicate together. Uh, there is a study from McKinsey uh, that has a very clear correlation between connectivity and economic growth, economic GDP per person. So this is, I would say, and, and the reason I put this here is I started to talk to customers and they all said, hey, but why don't I, and so forth. So classical energy companies, energy groups, they see an opportunity also to widen up their market to adjacent, uh, to adjacent opportunities. Um, I think that I um, came to kind of close to, uh, to the end of my speech. Um, Votre temps restant quatre minutes. So um, maybe it's an opportunity now to take some questions and some thoughts. How do you plan to take the How energy that's that created with uh, your system and getting it onto the grid or onto microgrids to actually power homes, vehicles, whatever you decide to use for the energy? Yeah, well, actually, it's a very good question. Um, I see two potential use cases. Um, one is uh, for existing wind park owners who have already that infrastructure to capitalize on their existing investments. So for example, they have their masts out there on the, in, in the North Sea or in the oceans, uh, take away the blades, use a platform to launch this thing and to, to harvest um, the upper skies. That's one segment. The other segment is really local, decentralized. It's a, it's a Maladive island that has its generator there and that can launch our system either from the island um, or from a boat which is connected to the island. 
uh, by the way, what you're seeing here um, is um, a demonstrator uh, because, again, we, you've seen animations, you've seen uh, some talks about it, but this thing really works. I mean, th this is a, a wind tunnel test where I um, basically you see a one, one hand side, four wings pitch control, creating lift, and the rotational moment. And for those who are here tomorrow, I will uh, display this thing in my booth here behind the wall, and we can talk more about it. That's great. So I think, actually, that's a good point to finish on, because uh, Michael is here. He's just over there. Um, and he can show you all manner of fun things about how you create m uh, energy up in the air. So thank you, I think, just in the traditional fashion, if we can thank Michael. Thank you very much.